Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is a recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 8 Episode 4, Lights Out. This episode opens with Lisa Rinna on her way to Tokyo to chaperone her daughter's fashion shoot or I don't know, they're walking in a show. I, they're they're modeling in Japan. And she has asked Erica to join her. So of course Erica and the Glam Squad are going to be meeting her in Tokyo. And oh my gosh, her daughters are like big celebrities. They're at the airport in Tokyo. Kids have signs and they're like behind a rope, taking pictures. It's pretty wild. The next scene is at Villa Rosa and Lisa Vanderpump is hosting Dorit, Kyle, and Teddy for a luncheon. Nothing much really happens there except for the fact that Teddy is realizing that everybody talks about Rena behind her back. I mean, they all talk about each other behind their back, so I don't know. The only other thing of significance there is that Kyle was inviting everybody to a party at her house before all the real major construction happens with the reno. But it's already started, so I, I am not sure what this is all about. We have a little filler scene at Teddy's house where she's putting sunscreen on the kids and the family's getting ready to go on a hike. And then Teddy tells us how competitive she is with her husband, Edwin, and she says to the confession cam, I take him down every time. Okay, and then we have the scene where poor Edwin is pushing a stroller with two kids and the dog up a hill while Teddy just runs on ahead by herself. Um, okay. Next, we find out that Lisa Vanderpump is the editor-in-chief of Beverly Hills Lifestyle Magazine. Whatever that is. And the, I don't know who, representatives from the magazine come over to her house, the president, and I don't know who these people are, but they're talking about a photo shoot that Vanderpump is having for a line of jewelry that she created, well, the designer created, and she had probably very little input. So I guess they're gonna do a photo spread in the magazine, and Vanderpump tells them that she would like to have the model be Dorit. The woman said, oh yes. She's got a very strong Instagram following, and she I think she's really on brand for us. Okay. So they're on board and all Lisa has to do is convince Dory to do it. Mm. Gee, I wonder if that'll be difficult. Quick side note, in the confession cam, Vanderpump puts on these glasses that are to die for. I love a really cool pair of glasses. I'm a glasses wearing girl. These are awesome. So Erica joins Rinna and her daughters in Tokyo and they're in a store where flash bulbs are going off and everyone's going crazy for Rinna's girls. And I can't figure out why people aren't going crazy for Erica because she walks in like a force to be reckoned with. Wow. Her look is on point. She is so cool head to toe that woman cares about everything and attention to detail. And I, I mean, I don't know why the crowds weren't going crazy for her, other than the fact that they're probably all little preteen girls who don't even know who Erica is. Anyway, then the girls get whisked off somewhere and Rinna is talking to Erica and she's telling her how hard the girls are working and seven days a week and long hours. And then I think it's to the confession cam. She says how, you know, first there was the Kardashians and the window opened and then there were the Hadid girls. And what, now your girls? She is so jealous of Yolanda's daughters. No joke. But I, listen, I don't know. I can't predict the future and maybe 
Delilah and Amelia are going to be the next Gigi and Bella. Who knows? But I don't remember Yolanda ever talking about how famous she was going to make them be and they were going to be the next Kardashians. And no, Yolanda just got down to work, made it happen. Work, you know, the girls worked hard and they're gorgeous. Not that Amelia and Delilah aren't gorgeous, they are. I just think Lisa wants it too bad. I just think Lisa might be jinxing it by talking about their fame so much so early. That's just my opinion. Okay, now we go from one set of models to another model, Dorit, at her fashion shoot. All right, she claims that Vanderpump only told her the day before that it was gonna be her face. And I believe her because Lisa was talking about just a hand model because it's jewelry, it's like bracelets and rings. And so now that her face is in it, she didn't bring her glam squad. So there's this guy that's putting her makeup on and I gotta tell you something. I'm kind of on Dorit's side here. It looked terrible. It looked very drag queen-esque. And she is so irritated with this guy. And it, she tells him, he, okay, you poked me in the eye, but it's fine. That's all right. He, and he didn't say a word. It just looked very amateurish. And if you compare how she looks in this scene with the guy doing her makeup to the way she looks in her confession cam, then it becomes really obvious how bad this guy is. So she does the fashion shoot and Lisa's fawning over, oh darling, you're going to love this one. Come take a look, Dorit, come take a look. And she looks at it and she's like, uh. she looks fine, but Dorit is a beautiful woman. She does not look her best in these pictures. So I'm with Dorit on this one. Next, Erica and Rina are walking through this beautiful park in Tokyo. And they've got these gorgeous umbrellas that look like the umbrellas you put in a cocktail. And they're walking through the park and they're, I mean, I don't know if it's for sun, for rain, I don't know what the story is, but they've got them kind of just behind their back. So maybe it's just a fashion statement. Later, the two of them go to a geisha house for an authentic Japanese meal. And Erica, oh my God. Have you guys been watching her everyday look here in Tokyo? Gorge. Just, just beyond. Today she has on like a cotton candy pink wig and this black kimono and these thigh high patent leather boots. You can't not, like visually she is an adventure. So this look was fantastic. Unfortunately, she had to take those boots off to go in the place because all shoes off. And then they're sitting and eating and, well, the ladies were struggling a bit with the fair. They were using a lot of descriptive words like this really tastes like the ocean, a bit slimy. I heard, uh, chewy and tempura nemo right out of your aquarium so i kind of get the feeling that they left there and wanted to go get a cheeseburger somewhere oh also they keep showing these flashback pictures of rinna when she was 19. i guess they were saying that's when she kind of started her modeling career but oh man I get that it was many years ago, but wow, they were a little rough. The next scene takes place at Kyle's house and it's a few hours before the party. Kyle's in her closet picking things out and the power goes out. So she goes running to the top of the stairs for calling for Glenn. Uh, who is this Glenn? Because he's awfully sassy. He apparently was the party planner, but from the looks of this guy, I thought he was one of the construction workers. He's got a big sloppy t-shirt that's got stains on it, and I, I don't know if he's got sweatpants on. I mean, the guy just doesn't look like a party planner. But besides that, he's super sassy. 
Kyle's panicking a little bit because she's trying to get everything ready for this party around the construction and now the power goes out. And so she's like, oh my, Glenn, what? Should I just call everybody and tell them not to come? Here's Glenn's reply. No, don't call everybody and tell them not to come. Wow, Glenn. Damn. So the guests start arriving and even before they get into the house, Dorit and PK are complaining about what an unseasonably warm evening it is. And Dorit's like, oh yeah, it's gotta be like 100 degrees. So they get into the house that of course has no power and they're eating outside in the backyard. And from that moment on, Dorit was complaining, complaining, complaining about the heat, which isn't very gracious of you as a guest, right? So at one point she's, do you have any fans? And Glenn says, yeah, well, I mean, we can get some fans. I could, I could, I could get some fans out here. What, what kind of fans? Is, isn't the power out? Isn't that what the whole issue is? How are you gonna run the fans? I'm not sure. Maybe he was also gonna get a generator, I suppose. But I was confused. Anyway, everybody else starts to arrive and they sit down to dinner and it's set up very pretty and nice. I feel like everyone's getting along. Camille Grammer is there and she brings her new boyfriend, David, who seems very attractive and nice. I am, however, getting a slight David Foster vibe from just from the looks. Hopefully he doesn't have the same size ego as David Foster. But the star of the evening seems to be Dorit getting consistently more and more intoxicated. For some reason, I think she thinks this is going to help her with the heat. And maybe just to forget how hot she is, I don't know. But she's getting pretty obnoxious. In fact, so obnoxious that PK tells her to like bring it down a notch. And Vanderpump on the other side of her is like shoving a napkin in her mouth. And that's where this episode ends. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to Jill Informed. And I would love to hear from you guys, so please comment down below. And I will see you next week and every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time right here for the next recap of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.